Another quick, ex- another quick, another quick example. Why am I whistling? If you're looking for the perfect mid-range phone that happens to be a flagship phone in disguise, then you've landed on the right video. Watch this whole video to see what the Pixel 8 has to offer and why I think it's a great phone for you. Let's go. The Google Pixel 8 is super smooth with fluid animations and clean transitions as you traverse the operating system. If you're into medium-sized phones with good ergonomics, then you'll definitely enjoy the hardware of this phone. A 6.2 inch flat and bright display etched into the satin metal frame combined with its glossy curved back. These elements all contribute to a very nice to look at and nice to hold device. The 120Hz screen refresh rate, slim bezels, wireless charging, water resistance, decent performance to play most games at medium settings, and literally flagship tier cameras. They can take photos that are better or just as good as almost any phone on the market. For what you get at this price range and with potential sales and discounts, you really can't go wrong, unless you can. So far, I've been saying that this phone is super amazing and worth getting, but even with all these benefits, it may not be the right device for you. If you're coming from an older and smaller Pixel, then you may not enjoy this device as much as you think because of the new form factor. The Pixel A is bigger and slightly thicker than the Pixel 5. It also lacks a fingerprint sensor on the back, which many people love and miss. On top of all that, the Pixel A is significantly heavier than the Pixel 4, the 4A, and the 5. Basically, if you're upgrading from any of those, expect an adjustment period. Functionally, the Pixel experience hasn't changed that much, so there's also that to factor. If you're satisfied with your current device, then don't expect an excitingly new experience. Regardless, it should be a great experience even if it isn't the most exciting. But that leads me into my next point geared towards people who are considering switching from a non-Pixel device. If you value deep levels of customization, you won't find that here. Google is slowly adding better customization, but it still pales in comparison to 90% of the other Android skins and phones on the market. To give you two good examples of how mediocre the customization is on this phone, take a look at the glance bar and the Google search bar. Both are actually cool widgets and tie really well into Google's ecosystem and have smart suggestions that could be useful, but you can't remove those widgets from your home screen. Android is known for customization, yet the owners and the ones behind Android itself as a platform heavily limits you in such a silly way. You can't move these widgets and you can't resize them, they are just there. Another quick example is the lack of icon customization. You cannot install custom icons and icon packs on Pixel phones unless you use a different launcher. But to me, you buy a Pixel phone for that Pixel experience. The seemingly minimal Pixel experience also lacks other power user things such as intuitive multitasking features like floating windows and split screen gestures, manual camera controls, and top tier gaming performances. It can definitely game and hold its own in terms of general performance, but it's not at the top like some other phones in this price range. If you don't care about those things and you just want a really good phone with the smoothest animations in the Android game, then the Pixel 8 is perfect for you. All right, so now let's get into some new features that are kind of hidden beneath the surface. All right, so the first one is best take. So when you take pictures of like a group of people, what best take allows you to do is you get to choose between different faces for each person to, you know, get the best take and have the picture look nice. So, you know, usually when you take a group photo, somebody's always yawning or coughing or closing their eyes. But with best take, you can actually just you know, pick the best face that works perfectly for that. Magic Eraser, you highlight a section of a photo and the Magic Eraser will get rid of whatever you highlight. So it could be like a speck of dust, something on someone's face or, you know, background objects. It can be pretty good, but it could also be pretty bad. It's basically like cloning if you ever use Photoshop or like different apps that allow you to do that. But um, it's, it's AI, it's smart. So there's that. And then there's the audio Magic Eraser. You can basically do the same thing, but in audio. So if there's like a loud background noise, pinpoint that noise and try to get rid of it in the audio. Yeah, there's AI wallpapers, but unfortunately I couldn't test it out for some reason it's not working. Maybe it's just my region. Some regions in the world don't have all these features that the pixels have. And then you have Magic Compose. So basically the AI for Magic Compose, it crafts special responses, stylized responses to messages that you get in your messages app. And it uses the context. So like, let's say you're talking about ice cream and then somebody asks you like, oh, do you want to get ice cream? Magic Compose can give you a stylized response to that message. You can use Magic Compose to get suggestions to start a message or reply to a conversation or you can use it to rewrite drafted messages in different styles. It's basically just using AI to help you talk and say what you want to say. And then you have interpreter mode. So this is pretty cool. Basically, it's the phone acts as an interpreter between you and another person speaking a different language from you. And you can speak back and forth between those languages. So in my example, I'm going to show you I'm speaking Japanese and English. You know, I'm trying to learn Japanese, so I'm not perfect at it if my pronunciation is off or whatever. But basically, I'm pretending to be two different people speaking back and forth. And it works pretty well, like in my experience with that. And and it's pretty fast. If you actually use this mode, let me know in the comments below how well it works in a real world situation. Be my interpreter. All right, what language do you want translated? Japanese. 
Sure, I'll be your interpreter. こんばんは。Good evening. 寿司を食べますか Do you eat sushi? ?Yes, I do eat sushi. はい、私はお寿司を食べます。毎日東京に行きますか Do you go to Tokyo every day? No, only sometimes. And then you have now playing. So, with now playing, if your Pixel phone is somewhere and there's music playing, your phone will just tell you, like, on the lock screen at the bottom, like, what's playing. And then the cool thing about now playing is that you can go back later on and check out those songs and see, like, a whole list of the history of songs that your phone heard. I think this is pretty cool because let's say you're in a store, like, when I go to, like, you know, K Town, I'm in, like, these Korean stores and stuff like that, or I'm in, like, a, let's say, a Japanese store in Toronto, I hear different songs and I'm like, yo, that song sounds kind of cool. You know, I don't know what song it is. My pixel will pick it up and then I can check the history later on to, you know, check out that song and see if I want to add it to a playlist or something. So that's pretty cool. And then there's hold for me. Let's say you call like、uh, your government for whatever reason, like you, you know, you need to deal with some documents. And usually with those kind of calls, you get put on hold for a long time. So what you can do with your Pixel phone, your Pixel 8, is that you can use the Google Assistant to hold the call for you. So like they'll put you on hold and then the Google Assistant will be listening to the call and it will notify you that they're back or that you got through to the, the next person that you're supposed to speak to. You're not on hold anymore. And then there's direct my call. So direct my call. Basically, it gives you like a, a menu. So, you, you know, when you call like a, let's say a bank and then they have an automated system where it's like press one to talk about checking accounts, press two to talk about bills and payments, you know, stuff like that. Direct My Call visualizes that for you so that you can see those things and then you can just press on your screen and choose those options like you would with a menu. So, it's pretty cool. It gives you, you know, a little bit more of interactive interface rather than just pressing one, two, or three for whatever it's asking you to press and then you kind of forget the options it reads. And then And it goes back and forth and reads it. So, the next feature is call screening. So, basically, what call screening is on the Pixel 8 and Pixels in general is the Google Assistant will answer the call before you get the call. Basically, like act as like your assistant. So, it'd be like, um, hello, like, somebody will call. It would be like, hello, this is the Google Assistant. Who are you? Why are you calling? It will ask those kind of questions. And then, if it's a spam call, you will not get the call. Like, it will not answer. And it will tell you that it's a spam call. If it's not a spam call, it will tell you what the person said. So, this person is calling for this reason. And then, you have the option to answer or decline. There's two different modes. There's automatic call screening, which basically it does it by itself. And then there's manual where you control it and you basically respond to the person through like texting. Like you text and then Google Assistant will read it out to the person and then you will see the response and stuff like that. So call screening is cool. If you're somebody who gets a lot of calls and you know you don't want to deal with all that, then Google Assistant can help you out with that to make the load a little bit easier. I haven't used the feature yet, but it sounds like a pretty useful feature and to get rid of the annoying spam calls in a way. The next special AI feature is voice recorder transcription. So basically, when you're recording your voice in the recorder app, the AI on the phone will be able to clearly detect what you're saying and accurately detect it. And then it will turn it into a, like text, basically. So let's say I have a story idea and I don't want to write it down, but I want to like remember it. So normally you could just use a recorder app, but with the recorder transcription, I can say the story out loud and then it will be in text. And then boom, I now I can copy that into my notes and just have that written down. And I can also have the audio file. So if I want to listen to it or if I want to see it as text, send it to someone else or something like that, you have that option because of the voice transcriptions. So I'm going to show you an example of that. It's cool. All right. So I'm going to test out the dictation because it's supposed to be really good on this phone with the Google Tensor G3 chip. I'm recording from my iPhone with the mic connected to it. You hear my daughter in the background. As you can see, it's basically capturing every word that I say correctly from a decent distance away. And it's adding periods and commas and stuff like that.、Um, punctuation, as it thinks. The Google Pixel 8 is a really good phone for people who don't want to spend too much for a flagship phone, but also care about a very smooth experience. The next cool feature that's not necessarily AI, but it's a nice feature and it's on other phones. It's on iPhones, it's on Samsung phones. It's、uh, pretty useful. It's the back tap. You can tap the back of your phone, your Pixel phone, two times and it will do different things. So you can set it to open an app, turn on the flashlight, turn on do not disturb, things like that. It's just a little bit more customization and it's another way to get into things that you need to quickly. I like these kind of features because my phone should enhance my quality of life. It shouldn't be hard to do certain things or be limiting in different ways. So having more options to open apps and do different things is always a bonus to me. 
And then there's live wallpapers. So these are just wallpapers that like Google provides and they are essentially just videos, but they look nice. And some of them are interactive and they change based on like the time or like the charge state of your phone. So there's one where it's like a sunset. If your phone's batteries are at 100%, then the sun is in the sky. And as your battery goes down, the sun will go down, 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 down until your battery is really low and then it's nighttime. So stuff like that is pretty cool. I like the earth one where it shows you like your location and like kind of what the rotation looks like at the moment. Or the moon one where it will show you a different kind of moon depending on the time and stuff based on your location. So yeah, live wallpapers are cool and I hope they add more to it. Okay, so now we got the cameras. Pixel phones are known for their cameras. They're known for their computational photography, which means that it's photography that the computer inside of the phone does a lot of the work. So with a normal camera, you just take a picture and then cameras nowadays have processors and they have computers in them that process images, but like usually there's less processing. But with Google phones, the processing is crazy. Like they really like have this AI and, and these algorithms that see like, okay, this is a person, that's a bus, that's a bike, that's a sky. We're gonna make sure that the colors look like this. We're going to make sure that we, you know, try to get rid of some of the fuzziness in this area, all that kind of stuff. The phone does that every single time you take a picture. Google phones just produce really good photos. And the area that like that kind of stuff is good for is just like taking a quick photo. So somebody who is not necessarily a photography enthusiast or a person who knows about photography that well, but they just want to take a photo and have it look nice. So Google phones are the best for this because of what I said, like they have been working on this computational thing for a long time and they've mastered it. And honestly, in my opinion, they do a better job than a lot of the other phone manufacturers out there. Like nine times out of 10, you get a good photo with a Pixel phone, regardless of your subject matter versus other phones, even iPhones and Samsungs. On top of that, just being really good cameras in general, especially for like kids and pets, you have different modes. So you have the normal photography and videography modes where you can record video. Uh, you can adjust the settings. These Pixel phones have higher megapixels counts if you want to go deeper and take a higher quality image, which allows you to edit it more. Basically, if you have a low quality image and you're editing it, it's going to turn out bad. The quality overall is going to get reduced because you're editing it. You're putting on different things. But if you use a higher megapixel image, a higher quality image, then you can do more editing to it before it gets ruined by like editing. I hope that makes sense for people who are not too familiar with that kind of stuff. And then you have macro mode, which allows you to get really close to your subject and get like close up shots. You have night sight obviously that's for like photography at night or in lower light situations darker situations where you know there's not a lot of light around then you have 10-bit hdr video this is basically just a higher quality video filming mode with a lot of hdr so hdr means high dynamic range which it kind of like takes multiple exposures it takes multiple images and fuses them into one to kind of get like a very bright very saturated or you know, very contrasty image it's trying to like enhance the colors and the details and stuff like that. That's what HDR does. So this mode just takes that up another level for video if you want that. Personally, I don't like HDR that much, so I wouldn't use that mode, but it's there. Then you have cinematic mode, which it basically creates artificial blur behind the subject. And you can kind of bounce back and forth between different focuses. So focus on me and then focus on the phone, you know, back and forth. Like right now, autofocus is doing its thing. But with cinematic mode, it's more artificial. Like the blur is very heavy. It's like portrait mode if you use that. There's time lapse. You record video and then it will like time lapse it. So it will make it go really fast. So like you can use that for like recording the sky and seeing how the sky changes and stuff like that. It's cool for that. There's panning video. So it's a mode where it will help you to pan your video so basically what panning is is like having the camera and then turning slightly so that you're panning the angle kind of showing movement but it's not too much movement it's like subtle and nice you see this a lot in like videos on youtube nowadays and movies and stuff like that panning mode it kind of enhances the stabilization but it reduces the quality so pros and cons then there's portrait mode. Portrait mode is portrait mode. Basically, you're taking an image and then it creates an artificial blur around the subject and tries to make it look like the foreground in focus and the background blurred out. So if you're into that kind of thing, then portrait mode is good on this. And then there's top shot. So it will take multiple pictures and you can choose the best one from them astrophotography mode so with the pixel 8 because it doesn't fold and it can't hold itself up if you have a tripod and you go outside at night you can take a astrophotography picture which basically just it's a long exposure shot it gets the stars and the moon very clearly if you can see them in your area and stuff like that it makes a nice picture at nighttime of the sky and stuff like that so now with all those features covered and me showing you them and talking about them i'm going to ask the question who is this phone for is this phone for you is it for someone else like your your mom or your friend who is this phone for? The Google Pixel 8 is for people who want a phone that does what it's supposed to while feeling smooth and fresh like a pack of Tic Tacs, if you get me. To me, the Pixels have always been the iPhones of Android phones because of the simplicity in its software and the animations. 
Pixel 8 is just an easy device to recommend, kind of like how the iPhone 15 base model is easy to recommend as well. They're just great phones that work well. You won't have too much issues with them. The cameras are amazing. The performance is decent on the Pixel, but amazing on the iPhone. You won't have too many problems with these phones. That's why they're easy to recommend. Great cameras, great screen, premium feel and design, long-term software support and reliability, a decent amount of extra features for enthusiasts, and possibly the best cameras for capturing pets and kids. For someone like my mother-in-law, I think it's the perfect phone for her. She loves taking photos of family and friends and also values her time, so she needs a phone that works really well. And that's what the Pixel 8 does. It just works well. Shout out to her because she let me borrow her phone for this video. Let me know what you think in the comments. Is the Pixel 8 a great phone? And would you buy it for yourself or recommend it to family and friends? But that is basically it. That is the Pixel 8. Hopefully you enjoyed this review and we got a lot more content on the way. You know, a review and more videos on the Pixel Fold right here. Videos on the OnePlus Open, the Z Fold 5 and uh, a lot more content. So subscribe for all of that. Like if you like the video and yeah, we out. Peace.